This program is designed to give sales and service personnel an overall view of the International 540 Wheel Loader. The program will show and describe the location of the major components and give a brief description of their function. In addition, a number of important machine specifications will be noted. The 540 wheel loader joins the growing family of International 500 series loaders. This three and three quarter cubic yard loader incorporates the latest design innovations of the 500 series line of articulated rubber tired front end loaders while retaining some of the proven drivetrain features of its predecessor, the H80B. The 540 has a standard three and three quarter cubic yard bucket but can also be equipped with a four and a quarter cubic yard or a four and three quarter cubic yard straight edge bucket. All three buckets are 114 inches wide and have an integral spill guard. Optional bucket teeth are available for each bucket to provide additional material penetration. It should be noted that all machine specifications listed in this program apply only when the 540 is equipped with standard tires and the standard bucket. The overall length of the 540 with the bucket on the ground is 24 feet 2 inches. Equipped with standard tires, it is 11 feet high and 9 feet 1 inch wide. It has a 9 foot 9 inch wheelbase with a ground clearance of 14 and one half inches, resulting in an exceptionally stable machine. The operating weight of this loader is 35,750 pounds when equipped with standard equipment and an operator. The 540 has a breakout force of 33,540 pounds and a lifting capacity of 40,377 pounds. Couple that with a reach of 3 feet 8 inches and a dump height of 10 feet with a 45 degree dump angle and you've got a loader that can really perform. As mentioned previously, the 540 is an articulated machine. The front frame, which is fastened rigidly to the front axle, provides a mount for the operator's compartment, boom cylinders, boom arms, and loader linkage. The operator's compartment, which is mounted to the top of the frame, allows the operator to turn with the bucket, affording a great deal of control and accuracy. The rear frame provides a platform on which to mount the engine, torque converter, transmission, and radiator grill. The rear axle is connected to a bolster, which in turn is fastened by two pins to the rear frame. This arrangement permits the rear axle to oscillate a total of 26 degrees on uneven terrain. A heavy cast counterweight is attached to the rear of the machine and is furnished as standard equipment. This counterweight provides the 540 wheel loader with excellent machine stability. Two high strength center hinge pins connect as well as provide the pivot point for the front and rear frame. This view of the hinge area is from the right side. In addition to the center hinge pins, the frame sections are linked together by a pair of steering cylinders. The head ends of the cylinders are anchored in the front frame with the rod ends pinned to the rear frame. As one cylinder extends, the opposite one retracts, pivoting the frame sections a maximum of 35 degrees in either direction on the hinge pins and steering the machine. This type of articulated steering has definite advantages. It eliminates the need for a steering axle with its additional parts. It eliminates the drag link and tie rod, and it allows the rear wheels to track in the path of the front wheels. This latter feature ensures a much shorter turning radius than that afforded by a more conventional rigid frame and steering axle type. The turning radius of the 540 from the outside corner of the bucket is 23 feet 1 inch. A bar and two pins are provided on the left side of the rear frame. As a safety precaution, these should be used to lock the two frames together when the machine is being serviced or transported. Always check that the bar and pins have been replaced in the storage position before operating the machine. To aid the service personnel in performing required maintenance procedures, which help keep the 540 in top condition, 
a service chart is located on the right side of the rear frame. This chart lists the location and hourly maintenance schedule of the service points. It also lists the types of lubricants to be used for proper maintenance of the machine. By following this chart, the service personnel aids in prolonging the life of the 540. Before going any further in the program, let's take a few minutes for review. Stop the tape while you're answering the questions. The answer to number one is B, three and three quarter cubic yards. Number two, the major advantage of mounting the operator's compartment to the front frame is to allow the operator to turn with the bucket, affording a great deal of control and accuracy. Number three is B, the frame halves will pivot 35 degrees in each direction. Number four is false. The rear axle is mounted to a bolster, which allows the axle to oscillate up and down. The power for the 540 loader is supplied by the International DT-466B diesel engine mounted in the rear frame in front of the radiator. Power then flows to a single-stage, single-phase torque converter. From the converter, power is transmitted by a drive shaft to a full power shift transmission. Power then flows from the transmission to the front and rear differentials. The transmission is connected to the front differential by two drive shafts and the transfer drive assembly. The transmission is connected to the rear differential by a single drive shaft. Full floating axles deliver the power from the differentials to the wheel planetaries, thus providing power for all four wheels. Let's take a closer look at the powertrain components by starting with the engine. The 540 is powered by the International DT-466B turbocharged engine. It's a six-cylinder, four-cycle, direct start, direct injection diesel. The engine develops 189 flywheel horsepower at 2,500 RPM and has a bore and stroke of 4.3 by 5.35 inches, resulting in a total displacement of 466 cubic inches. The engine is positioned in the rear frame, facing the radiator at the back of the loader. It is isolation mounted to the rear frame meaning that rubber pads separate the engine from the frame at the mounting points. ISO mounting results in less noise, less engine vibration, and fewer shock loads absorbed by the engine. For ease in servicing, the engine side panels are hinged and swing out, completely exposing each side of the engine. Now, these panels are equipped with anti-vandalism locks and should be locked when the machine is unattended. Shown here is the right side of the DT-466B. For our purposes, the right side of the engine is located on the right side of the machine, as if we were sitting in the operator's seat. In this photograph, we can see the air compressor, the oil filler tube and dipstick, the injection pump, and its hand primer. Also located on the right side of the engine are the intake manifold, the throttle cable, the engine starter, two spin-on fuel filters, and the optional alcohol injector. Located on the left side of the DT-466B are the exhaust manifold, the muffler, the turbocharger, the combination coolant filter and conditioner, and the 65-amp alternator with an integral regulator. In this view of the engine's left side, we can see the two spin-on engine oil filters, the engine oil cooler, and the transmission oil cooler. Electrical energy for starting the engine and operating the other electrical system components is stored in two low-maintenance batteries. The batteries are located behind hinged doors, one on each side of the bulkhead assembly. The two 12-volt batteries are connected in series to make 24 volts available for the electrical system. It should be noted that later 540 loaders will be equipped with maintenance-free batteries. Also visible in this picture is the master switch for the electrical system, located on the front face of the bulkhead assembly. 
The master switch is key operated and completely disconnects all electrical components from the batteries. To prevent any possible damage to the alternator and or voltage regulator, the master switch must be in the on position when the engine is running. The switch must be in the off position only when the engine is shut down. The air cleaner is mounted over the right side of the engine and can be easily serviced from the right side of the machine by opening the hinged access panel. The air cleaner housing contains two dry type paper elements, primary and safety, so the air is filtered twice before it enters the engine. To help prolong the life of the air cleaner elements, an exhaust aspirated pre-cleaner assembly is mounted on the top of the air cleaner housing. Air enters the pre-cleaner assembly through the screen portion under the rain cap and is rapidly swirled about. The centrifugal force separates 90 to 95 percent of all dust and dirt in the air. This dust and dirt is being continuously pulled out of the pre-cleaner assembly and expelled through the exhaust pipe. The result is a prolonged filter life and longer service interval. The air cleaner service indicator is mounted to the front left side of the bulkhead next to the hydraulic sight gauge and is easily visible from the operator's compartment. During operation, the red band will gradually rise in the indicator window as dirt accumulates in the air filter elements. When the filter elements reach the maximum allowable restriction, the red band will completely fill the indicator window and automatically lock in this position. The red band will remain fully exposed even after stopping the engine. When this happens, filter element service is required. Press the reset button on top of the indicator after the elements have been serviced. Fuel for the injection system is stored in a heavy gauge metal tank. The tank is safely located below the engine compartment on the bottom of the rear frame. It has a capacity of 80 gallons, providing plenty of fuel for a long shift. Attached to the front portion of the fuel tank are two remote drains, one for engine oil and one for coolant. The two remote drains make servicing the two systems much simpler. The fuel tank filler tube is located on the right side of the loader. It contains a wire strainer to help keep contaminants out of the tank. A lockable filler tube cap is standard on the 540. The standard counterweight is located just behind the fuel tank. It's attached to the end of the rear frame and extends down low enough to offer protection for the fuel tank. The counterweight also helps to protect the rear lights and radiator grill from rear end damage. The radiator for the 540 is located directly behind the engine. A shroud and finger guard protect the radio flow suction fan from damage. In the photo on the left, the grill has been removed. The daily check of the engine coolant level can be quickly and easily made by looking at the sight gauge installed in the rear of the top radiator tank. Shown in the photo on the right is the automotive type filler cap. It's located on top of the radiator and allows coolant to be safely and easily added to the system. This cap has a built-in pressure valve which limits pressure in the cooling system. Available as an option is a low engine coolant warning light. A sensor located in the cooling system triggers a system failure light on the instrument panel if the coolant level drops below a specified level. Shown here is the torque converter with the pumps removed. It bolts directly to the engine flywheel housing and is driven by the engine flywheel. Its function is to automatically vary the torque output needed by the machine to meet the ever-changing load requirements during the work cycle. When the load is light, engine power is transferred by the converter with little change in torque. When a heavy load is encountered, the torque multiplication becomes greater, but with a resulting loss of speed. It's important to note that the torque converter does not increase engine horsepower but does increase the amount of torque available at the wheels. This single stage, single phase rotating housing type of converter has a stall ratio of 2.25 to one. Three pumps are mounted to the converter housing and are driven by the engine through the converter rotating housing. 
The dual element pump mounted to the top of the converter housing is the steering and switch pump. The dual element pump shown on the left is the transmission charging and lube pump. The single element pump mounted to the bottom of the housing is for the loader system. The transmission is mounted in the front portion of the rear frame. In this view, we're at the left side of the machine, looking toward the front. A drive shaft with a universal joint on each end directs torque converter output to the International S702 transmission. This full power shift transmission is designed to increase the useful range of the torque converter. Now to do this, a constant mesh counter shaft design with hydraulically actuated clutches is employed. First range increases power for starting, and as the demand on the converter diminishes, the transmission may be progressively shifted into higher ranges. The S702 provides three manually selected speeds in both forward and reverse. The transmission housing serves as the reservoir for the transmission and torque converter hydraulic system. A sight gauge is located on the right side of the transmission to make level checks simpler. The transmission control valve assembly is mounted on the left side of the transmission case. Oil is drawn from the transmission sump by the charging pump and is delivered through a pressure filter to the control valve inlet port indicated on the photo. The control valve regulates main system pressure, converter pressure, and lube oil flow. It contains two control spools, range and directional. These spools are connected through mechanical linkage to the transmission control levers in the operator's compartment. When a control spool is shifted, oil is directed through internal passages in the control valve to the selected clutch pack. The control valve also governs the rate of pressure buildup on oil sent to the clutch packs in order to produce a soft shift. A transmission disconnect circuit is also built into the control valve. It's controlled by the electric solenoid and activated by the left brake pedal. To eliminate the need for a long drive shaft between the transmission and the front axle differential, a transfer drive is installed in the front frame. This photo shows the transfer drive viewed from under the front frame looking towards the rear of the loader. Transmission output torque is directed to the transfer drive by a short drive shaft and universal joint. Another drive shaft directs the torque from the transfer drive to the front differential. This arrangement permits the 540 to articulate 35 degrees to the right or left without having any sharp pivots of the universal joints. Transmission output torque is directed to the rear axle differential by a drive shaft with a universal joint at both ends. The double reduction axle assemblies accomplish three main functions. They transmit the torque from the transmission 90 degrees to the left and right of its input direction, increase the input torque through double reduction gearing, and provide a means of securing the wheels and at the same time support the tractor. Both axles are full floating, meaning that none of the weight of the machine is supported by or transmitted to the axle shafts. All weight on the axle is supported by the wheels, bearings, and axle housing. The front axle housing is rigidly attached to the front frame, while the rear axle housing is bolted to a bolster which is attached to the rear frame. This bolster allows the rear axle to oscillate a total of 26 degrees vertically and still keep all four wheels on the ground. This vertical travel gives the 540 stability no matter how rough the terrain. The first gear reduction in both the front and rear axle assemblies occurs in the conventional type differentials. Each is located in the center of the axle housing and consists of a heavy-duty spiral bevel ring gear, a pinion gear, and a spider gear assembly. The three main functions of the differentials are to transmit the torque from the drive shaft to the axle shaft, to perform the first reduction of 4.8 to 1 in the double reduction axles, and to allow one drive wheel to rotate at a different speed than the opposite wheel under certain conditions, such as during a turn. The second gear reduction of 5.2 to 1 occurs in the planetary assembly located on the outboard end of each axle housing. 
the planetary assembly consists of three planet gears, a ring gear, and a sun gear. The standard tires on the 540 are the 23.5 by 25 L3 rock type tread with a 12 ply rating. The normal inflation pressure for the tires is 45 psi. Maintaining the proper air pressure provides maximum road contact and results in increased tire life. Too little air pressure increases deflection, results in extra strain on the tire, and increases the chance for bruising. Overinflation reduces tire deflection and tire contact area and results in rapid wear in the center of the tread. Before continuing with the program, let's take a few minutes for a review. Stop the tape while you're answering the question. The answer to number one is false. The engine is mounted to the rear frame. Number two is C. The S702 transmission provides three speeds in both forward and reverse. Number three, the 540 engine is the model DT466B containing six cylinders and is rated at 189 flywheel horsepower. Number four, the air cleaner contains two elements, a primary and safety. Number five, the engine oil drain plug is remotely mounted to the fuel tank on the right side of the loader. Number six, the converter is a single stage, single phase model with a stall ratio of 2.25 to one. Number seven is B. Three pumps are mounted to the converter, a dual element steering and switch pump, a dual element transmission pump, and a single element loader pump. Number eight, the 540 transmission is the model S702. Number nine, each axle contains two gear reductions. The first occurs in the differential and the second in the outboard mounted planetary assemblies. Number 10 is B. The service indicator for the air cleaner is located on the front left side of the bulkhead. 